Hello, I am Anna, and I am going to be going over Part C of Unit 1. And this particular little video is going to look a little bit at blood typing, and then very briefly at the hematocrit. Alright, so when it comes to blood typing, what you are doing is you are drawing blood. Okay? And you will notice that right here I am demonstrating a slide. And we have put three little drops of blood on it, right here, right here, and right here, okay? Now you will notice that we've labeled them A, B, and D. D goes with RH. This goes with the ABO blood type. So in lecture, you will be reviewing how your red blood cell has dozens of different blood types on it, okay? Two blood types, or two, excuse me, blood groups, okay? The two blood groups that we're going to be focusing on in lecture, I mean, excuse me, in the lab class, is ABO and RH. If you put them together, that gives you what we call the blood type that we pay attention to. So when you hear something like so-and-so is A positive or Jackie is O negative, they are talking about A, the ABO blood type, and then the plus minus, the RH blood type. We pay attention to those because they are the most relevant for causing blood transfusion reactions. The other blood groups are paid attention to, all these other little ones, when you're having to do organ transplants. But most of the other time, we don't have to pay attention to them too much. Okay, so what's going to happen is you're going to put the blood onto a slide, okay, that has a little depression to hold it like a little cup. Then you're going to take a drop of anti-A serum and put it on top of the A. Then you're going to take a drop of anti-B serum and put it on the B. And then you're going to take a drop of anti-RH and put it on top of the of that particular puddle of blood. Then you're going to mix it with the anti-serum and you're going to wait and see if a clumping or agglutination reaction occurs. Okay? All right, next slide. All right. Again, mostly you were doing this in lecture class, but I'm going to get everybody up to speed. All right. So your blood type when you talk about your your blood type, this is what you are typically talking about. This is the same as the phenotype, and in this case, we're looking at ABO blood, okay? What is nice is that the name of the blood type comes from what antigen is present. So type A blood has type A antigens. Type B blood has type B antigens. Type O is the same as zero, which means it doesn't have A or B antigens. B is both. A, excuse me, AB is both A and B antigens are present. So it's a really nice way of trying to remember it. Now, antibody is against. Anti is against the antigen, okay? So if I have type A, it's going to respond to anti-B antibodies, okay? It, or it's going to make anti-B antibodies, excuse me, because it's type A. It doesn't like B, so it's going to go against B. Type B blood is against A blood, so it's making anti-A antibodies. Now, type O blood, um, it hates everyone equally. So it's going to make both against B blood and against A blood. So anti-B antibodies and anti-A blood antibodies. Type AB blood doesn't want to kill itself, okay? So it makes nothing, okay? Now, in U.S. and European populations, the two most common uh, blood types are type O and type A, okay? If you go into Asia... The Himalayas, uh, Mongolia, parts of China, that's going to change, and type B is going to become a lot more dominant. Okay? All right, next slide. 
All right, so here I want to show you the agglutination pattern, all right? And this is with real blood, all right? If you're watching this video and you're in my online classes, you're going to be using fake blood. And when it agglutinates, it looks a little bit like jello or like spider webs. It doesn't look like what real blood um looks like all right which is frustrating but that's the way it goes all right so this is for my online classes you'll just have to be aware that it looks like spider webs or jello when it agglutinates real blood clumps all right the antibodies are grabbing the antigens and causing those red blood cells to stick together that causes them to clump and the fancy word for that is agglutinate Okay, sorry that this right here is over top of it. I don't know why it did that in the transfer to this program. But basically, I've got my slide, and I've got my column for anti-A and my column for anti-B. All right, and when this started, they put a drop of blood here, and they put a drop of blood here. Okay, I'm going to make them a little bit bigger. Okay, then they put a drop of anti-A serum here and a drop of anti-B serum here. Now, what you will notice is that this clumped and this clumped, okay? That means the anti-A serum bound to A antigens and the anti-B serum bound to B antigens. So this is type AB blood because both clumped okay now if we move on to the number two you will notice that in the a puddle of blood there's no clumping and in the b puddle there is clumping so since this clumped you have b clump which equals blood type b okay over here when we put in the serum the anti a bound to A antigens, therefore it is A blood, okay? Then type O, which is again another way to think of it is type zero, nothing clumps, okay? Now, I don't have a picture right here to show our H, so we're just gonna kinda do it real quick, and we're gonna make our slide right here, okay? I have my A, I have my B, and then right here, I have D, okay? I put blood in here, all right? I put a drop of anti-D serum, okay? Then I can do one of two things, okay? Over here, you will see I've got clumping. All right, if it clumps, that means it is positive for RH. So then it's RH positive. Over here, you've still got a clear puddle of blood, no clumping, therefore it is RH negative. So negative, no clump, positive clumps. Okay, that's all there is to it. All right, let's look at the next slide. All right, so really briefly, I'm gonna talk about the hematocrit. Um, we used to have an activity for doing this in the, in, the, in the classroom, but it doesn't work really well with fake blood. And so when we went from real blood to fake blood, we just kind of gave up on doing this activity in the lab. So now you've got an online simulation for playing with the hematocrit. So you're gonna label it in the lab activities and you're gonna you know, basically try to understand the process. So the hematocrit, you essentially take a little tube of blood, all right, and then you put it into a centrifuge and you spin it, all right? That causes the blood, because the blood has different densities, to separate into three layers, okay? So the hematocrit is all about creating three layers so that you can estimate the percentage of formed elements in the whole blood, okay? So the three layers, before you move the tube and screw it up, is gonna be the clear plasma and the red blood cells, okay? Then there's this intermediate layer called the Buffy 
which consists of leukocytes and platelets. And it's really, really, really thin. And if you move the hematocrit, it often, often gets obscured by the red blood cells. So it could be hard to see, okay? Um, here's some abbreviations. You can remember those. All right, we're going to go into the final slide now. All right, so looking at the hematocrit, we have one that has already been centrifuged, okay? You'll notice that they put a cap of wax at the end so that when they spin it, the blood doesn't go all out the wrong side. Um, I have done that before where you spin all the blood out and you're like, oh, we forgot to put the clay in. So they basically just put some clay on this little glass tube and that keeps the blood from separating. Now, you will notice um, that this has been separated so that the red blood cells go down here and they're red and the plasma is here, okay? Now, technically the buffy coat is gonna be right there, but again, often, as soon as you move the thing, it gets mixed in with the formed elements. So often when you're doing the reading, you're actually doing all the formed elements, just not, not just the red blood cells, because this is just really, really, really thin. Okay, all right, so that was the end of uh, unit one. Um, so you have now uh, been through all the videos for this unit and you can move on to working on your lab activities.